looking at MSC explicitly, but what we're trying to do is to say MSC is, should provide a trigger for us to respond. In the same way the OECD outlook overall is a trigger for us to respond in terms of looking at policy interventions that we might then apply. So what the PBR report, this is again the previous one as opposed to the one that's just been released, was saying that well actually MSA loss is estimated to be about 9%, 71 to 62 due to 2020 um, One thing that Simon didn't mention yesterday is that, um, is that MSA, although it's coming from a range of 0 to 100, in, in practice, the usable range is somewhat less than that. So actually a 9% decline is a very significant decline. That's a lot more than 9% might otherwise, you might otherwise think it would be 9%. But what we get from the BBL analysis is again looking at these option scenarios and saying, well, what would happen if we apply these option scenarios in biophysical terms? What would happen to MSA? And irrespective of, not, of, of whether we can think of policy intervention to talk to these, What's interesting is that, and slightly depressing in some respects, is that even if we have these very radical transformations in our economy, we would not manage to, to avoid this loss in, in MSA. Okay? So in some respects, that's a bleak story, but at the same time, there are certain interventions which could bring about significant benefits. Then we move into the quantitative assessment, what we do with this analysis. What we do is to say, well, actually, we're going to be looking at three particular volumes and trying to look at what's going to happen in terms of the change of extent of those biomes for business as usual versus the policy intervention. All right? This is a global biome map, and this is the biomes that we're looking at. So we're looking at temperate and tropical forests and grasslands. If you just kind of flash between these, we're covering a reasonable amount of terrestrial ecosystems okay? in terms of designation. And this is how we do the analysis, and I'll present the results obviously after that. The first thing we need to do is develop biome level value functions. So back to kind of economics 101, there are different ways that we can apply benefits transfer, which is basically borrowing a value from a, product, from a study site, from primary valuation, and transferring it to a policy site. Okay? The most simplistic way, which as I should state is used in T, if you look at true costs, you look at T for business, they use the most simplistic way of benefits transfer, and have very large values as a consequence. The most simplistic way of doing benefits transfer is to take a single value, adjust it for purchasing power parity, and there's your value somewhere else. Okay? What we're doing, I think, most academics would accept is the most complex approach, which is um, using a meta-aggression analysis. And how this works is this. We've got, we do a biome level analysis where we try to say, for instance, the temperate forests gather together all source data in terms of primary valuation estimates for, for temperate forests. Okay? We analyze these, test them, have a look at them and do some, some kind of subjective analysis for their methodological integrity, include them in the database only if they're geospatially referenced. Okay? We then convert them into a common unit of account, 2007 US dollars plus in power parity. And then we're basically saying, well, this value estimate that you get from this particular study site depends on local conditions of that study site. Okay? And that's how we generate this value function. So for instance, we've got three different study sites here of temperate forests. For each one of these individual sites, you're going to have some level of gross cell product, which means that uh, this is a proxy for gross, gross domestic product. So obviously the amount of income that people who are responding to that primary valuation will affect the, the value per hectare for that particular site. That is typically captured in most benefits transfer using meta-regression analysis. But other types of variables, which we found to be significant, aren't routinely captured. This is the kind of novelty and approach we're using. So for instance, study, study site area is critical. One of the key things you have to look at if you're doing a global assessment is to think, well, actually, if you're doing a global assessment, are we looking at marginal analysis? Is it a relatively small change in percentage? We have to take into account the fact that if there's lots of temperate forests close by to this site, then the marginal benefit of increasing that temperate forest is lower as compared to increasing the same extent, by the same extent, but an area where there's not much other temperate forest. Okay? So we allow for the study site area. We also allow critically for one of the ecological components. This is the HAM stands for the human appropriation of net primary product, which is a reasonable proxy, I think at least, and arguably a reasonable proxy for habitat intactness, the intensity of land use. Okay? So we find each of these variables are actually significant in our measure regression for temperate forests. And the other one which is quick is urban area within 50 kilometers. So again, this isn't typically done. We're using the GIS method, we use JS databases to look at urban area within 50 kilometers, and again that turns out to be a significant variable. 
All of these feed together into the binomial level value function. Now, my colleague Alistair will be talking in a separate session tomorrow about the value functions themselves, with the lack of time today. But, once, but what we can see here in this slide is just to give you some kind of summary of where we come from. So for the forestry biomes, you've got the temperate woodlands, the tropical forestry. You can see there the different, in our database, provisioning services, regulatory cultural supporting, others looking at total economic value and the total number of observations and the spread of those observations globally. So we did what we could. This is the study sites which, which passed our selection criteria. The search was fairly exhaustive, okay, using conservation international database, every career literature, etc. So we've got this database of values that we can then transfer from. The second stage, though, I think is probably where we where it's most novel, so the biomole value functions. So we've got temperate forests, okay? And what image Globio is telling us is that compared to the 2050 business as usual, this particular patch of temperate forest is going to grow by 4%. Okay? This particular patch of temperate forest is going to reduce by 7%. But by patch, I mean a contigu contiguous area. Okay? So we've got in total 243,491 exactly patches of temperate forest just in the OECD. So we're doing this individual patch level analysis for about 2.5 million patches. Okay? So for each of these patches of grassland or forest, or forest there will be some level of each of these different variables. And PBR's analysis is telling us that each of these individual patches is either growing or getting smaller. And we are valuing that marginal change. If it's getting bigger or getting smaller, we're valuing that marginal change. So at the policy site, there'll be a change in dollars. Say policy site one, there'll be an individual estimate of gross cell product in 2050, of study site area in 2050, of HAMP in 2050, and urban area in 2050. Different GIS databases used for this. Okay? So we're saying, given what we expect to be the change in 2050, what's that change in value because the study sites got four, the policy sites got four percent bigger? And we repeat this entire exercise for the 2050 with policy and compare it to 2050 without the policy. Okay? What we don't do is look at carbon because we treat that separately because image treats carbon separately. So in the case of carbon, we look at the land use type and then look at the value of the carbon estimate beyond that. Some results. This is the kind of biophysical change, and we're looking at the example here for agricultural productivity. So to remind you, we're talking about we're talking about a situation in agricultural productivity where we have an increase in agricultural yield. What does this mean? What it means in practice is because you have an increase in agricultural yield, because of significant investment in agricultural knowledge, science, technology in the developing world, what that means is there's less appropriation of say primary forest forest because there's an increase in productivity. So we're trying to feed the same number of mouths, the same kind of diet in 2050. If you can do so and have increased productivity compared to the counterfactual, then you need to have less in incursion into tropical forests. Yeah. So this is what the PBL modeling is telling us as a baseline. It's giving us this is the kind of percentage changes if we have a high investment in ATSD. You see some very big changes in South, South Asia, for instance, but that's also the fact that the baseline is relatively small amounts of these particular violent types. We then aggregate the results. So imagine we've got two and a half million patches. We want to look at the value changes. So remember, we've done these value functions, aggregated them by region. Okay, so for instance, we've got OECD. And so what's the value change going to be? We've got these increases and certain decreases in patch size. If we add them all together, say 250 or 1,000 patches in OECD, then what happens? And this is where we get our kind of overall analysis. And you see that just agricultural productivity is a significant benefit. Okay? This is just for land use change, not for carbon. We augmented the carbon later when I show the results. But this is also showing us, which is very important in terms of tea, is that, that regionally there are differences. Okay? It's clearly the case we have to think with a kind of ethical perspective in mind. And for AKSD as well as for other options, there are some regions that benefit and some regions that worse off. Clearly, there's a message there in terms of the public good associated. The public good, sorry, the public good benefit that's associated with these kind of interventions. So we have regional disaggregation. There are some losers, there are some good beneficiaries from this kind of intervention. This is the MSA